Hello and welcome to this Substance Painter tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the project setup, painting, and rendering for the Substance Painter contest. So to get started, I wanted to show you how you can download a trial of Substance Painter. So here I'm at the Algorithmic website, so algorithmic.com. And if I come over here to this Download By page, you can see here is our 30-day free trial downloads. Here we have Substance Painter, and you can just choose the platform that you want to work with. Now, when I click download, I am going to get prompted to either log in or create an algorithmic account. The next thing we're going to do is jump over here to Substance Share, where you can download the asset you'll be texturing for the contest. For Substance Share, you'll need to log in or create an account if you don't have one already. Then you'll go to the Meshes category, Character, and you'll be able to download the file, which will be called Mesh underscore Matte. Lastly, here on Substance Source, we have some materials that you can download for free to use in your project. The link is provided in the description of this video. So you can just click the material, and then here you can choose to download. Here again, you'll also need to have an account here for Substance Source. So once you've downloaded the mesh and you have these materials, we'll now jump over to Painter, create a project, and then I'll show you how to render the asset for your submission to the contest. Here I have Substance Painter open, and the first thing I'm going to do is create my project. So I'll go to File, New, and in the New Project dialog, I'm going to use the PBR Metallic Roughness Template. For the Mesh, I'll hit Select, and navigate to the directory where I have downloaded the MeshMat.FBX. So I'll select the FBX, and I'll click Open. For my document resolution, I'm going to set this to just a working 2K, and then I'll just leave everything else as is and click OK. So this creates my Substance Painter project, and here you can see the asset has been loaded. Next, I'd like to add the substances that I grabbed from Substance Source into my project. So here, I'll click the Import button of my shelf. This opens up the Import Resources dialog, and I'll click the Add Resources button. So now I'll navigate to where I've downloaded the substances. I'll just select them all and click Open. All of these items are now loaded here into my resources. Now I'm going to hold down the Shift key and left click to select all of these resources at the same time, which means I can now edit them all together. So here for this undefined option, this is going to be a tag that I can set. I want to click this button and choose Base Material. And you can see that everything has been set to Base Material. Next, I'm going to come to my Import Resources 2 and choose my project. Now that I have my project set, I can add a new tag in this area to specifically filter these assets here in my shelf. So to do that, I'm just going to type in a tag of contest. Now that I have this set, I'll click import. And here we have our substances. So what I'm going to do here is click the filter editor button. I'll click the text query. And in the search field, I'm going to type in that tag that I set called contest. And this import tag, I'm going to remove this one. So now that I have this set, I can click the save a new shelf preset from the current filters. And so when I do that, you can see that I now have this contest option. So now I can just close the filter window, and this lets me quickly navigate here to a nice filtered result of the substance as I imported to my project. I can also break this out into a new window just to make it a little easier to work. So here I'm going to click this button here, which will create a subshelf. I can actually left click and drag this to tear it off and just place it anywhere else in the UI. So here I've just created a new shelf tab. Now I have quick access to these substances while I browse for other assets like alphas or brushes or even my smart materials. Now we're ready to start texturing the asset. I am going to want to use some mass generators in my painting process. So what I'm going to do is bake some maps. So here I have my three texture sets and I can actually batch process the baking for all three of these guys. So what I'm going to do with just the first texture set selected, I'll go to bake textures. And uh, here I'll just hit none for my additional maps. What I'm going to do is just choose ambient occlusion and curvature. Now, I don't have a high resolution mesh. I'm actually going to bake my ambient and curvature from the mesh that I have loaded in my project. So for my output size, I'll set this to uh, 2048. And then here I have an option for bake all texture sets. Again, this will bake AO and curvature for all of my sets. So let's do that now. So now I have my map bakes, and here you can see that I have AO and curvature as placed here in the additional map slot for my texture set. Uh, we're going to start with just the head. Now, uh, we have a specific uh, environment map we want you to use for the contest. So let's go ahead and set that up now. So we'll go to our viewer settings. And here for the environment map, 
I want to set my environment map. So I'm going to click the button here to load up the mini shelf and I'm going to scroll down and here we have an option for this Tomoko Studio. Let's use this one. All right, so like I said, we're going to start with the head first. So here are my smart materials. I'm going to start with this aluminum. So I'll just left click and drag and drop this here into my shelf. And so here you can see that we have this aluminum applied. Now I'm holding down the shift key and the right mouse button to just rotate my environment. All right, so now we have this aluminum and I'd also like to have basically like kind of like a double coat material. So we have aluminum on the bottom and then we're gonna have like this glossy vinyl on top. So I'm gonna take the glossy vinyl. Now this is uh, from the substance source materials. I'm gonna drag and drop this here into my shelf as well and I'll place it just right above that aluminum. So uh, what I'm gonna do for this guy is just come over to the settings here for this fill and I'm gonna change the projection here to triplanar and then I'm gonna change my UV scale. This is gonna tile this material. So I'll just tile this a bit. And so here's the result that I have. And now what I would like to do is mask this glossy vinyl material so that we can see some of this aluminum underneath. So to do that, I will right click and I'll choose add black mask. So I'm adding this mask here to that glossy vinyl. So it's black, it means it's completely transparent so we fully see the aluminum underneath of this. So what I'm gonna do here is come over to the effects button here. I'm gonna add an effect and I'm gonna choose a generator. And so now you can see that this generator is added as part of the mask. I'll click this generator button and here we have this option for this metal edge wear. I'm gonna choose this guy. Now this effect is opposite of what I want right now so I can just come over to the invert option and choose on. So now you can see that I have some uh, wearing here at the edges to reveal that aluminum underneath. And I can interactively work with these settings. So I can increase the wear level. I can in uh, increase the grunge amount like so. So we'll just do something like this here. So now I'd like to add a secondary effect to this mass that I'm building up. So here I'm gonna click my effect button and this time I'm gonna choose a fill. Now on this fill, I can come over to this grayscale button. I can click this and I'm doing a search here for grunge. So in this case, I just typed in grunge and it filters by grunge maps. And I'll scroll down here in the mini shelf and I'm gonna find one of these grunge maps. Uh, I think there's one here that I like, uh, this one, grunge scratches. So I'll left click to choose this map. Now this is actually a substance itself. So I have a few parameters that I can work with. For one, I wanna take the contrast and move this up a bit. So now here's the effect that I'm getting. I can also adjust the balance. So if I want to take a look at this mask that's being built, I can actually just hold down the Alt key and left click right on the mask. And that's going to put me in mask mode here in the viewer. This just kind of helps visualize this mask that I'm trying to build up. So now what I'd like to do for this grunge scratches fill layer that I've added, I'm going to change its uh, blending mode so that I can combine it here with this metal edge wear that I already have. So here for the blending mode, I'm going to choose multiply. Now what I'm building up here is what we refer to as the effects stack here in Substance Painter. So now I'm just going to hit M on the keyboard to go back to my material mode and you can see that I now have this combined effect of a mass generator which is the metal edge wear and this grunge scratches procedural texture. So now that I have these two layers I'd like to just put them in a group to represent this as one full material. So I'm going to come over here to the top of the layer stack and create a folder and here I'm just going to call this base and let's just uh, select both of these guys so I can hold down shift and left click to select both layers and I'll just left click and drag and drop them in here into the layer group. So now I have a single group here that represents this complex material. Now I'd like to be able to reuse this material so what I can do is right click on this and choose to create a smart material. And so here in my shelf, you can see that this smart material has been added as a new option for me. And we can reuse this here on the other texture sets for this mesh. So now I'd like to add some more variation here and by adding some new materials. So let's come back over here and let's use this metal weave uh, substance that we got from source. So I'll left click and drag and drop and I'll place this here on the top. And so since this is on top of the layer stack, it's overriding everything. Now I'm going to change its projection mode here to triplanar and then I'm going to adjust my UV scale. So let's just uh, maybe try something like, uh, well here, I'll come into here, I can double click and I'll type 2.9. So now what I'd like to do is mask this layer to a specific area on this mesh. And so an easy way to do that is just to right click and choose add black mask. 
Now I'm going to use a tool called the Polygon Fill Tool, and you can find it here at the top of the toolbar. So I'll select this tool, and here we have several options. Uh, the two options that are most use useful is the Mesh Fill and the UV. I'm going to uh, choose the UV Chunk Fill option. And here I have a color which is white to black. So white is going to be opaque and black is going to be transparent. So with this set to white, I can just left click here onto the mesh to set a mask. If I hold down the Alt key and left click on the mask, you can see the mask that's being generated for me. And this mask is being generated by me filling my UV shell with this white color. So here I'll hit M on the keyboard again to go back to material mode. Now here I'm in the 3D view, if I come up towards the top and I click the 3D 2D split, I can also just click here in the 2D view to make these UV shell selections. So I can do it in the 2D view or the 3D view, whichever is easier. For now I'm going to go back here just to my 3D only view. Next I'd like to go back here to my smart materials and grab this aluminum and then I drag this here to the top of my shelf as well. So again, because it's on the top of the layer stack, it's overwriting everything. Now we need to mask this layer. So again, right click, add black mask. I'm going to use my polygon fill set to UV mode. And then I'm just going to uh, click on an area here to fill this UV shell. So here's what I have, but uh, you know, I think I made a mistake. I think I'd like to change this portion. So what I can do, uh, since I'm in this polygon fill mode, I can just hit X on the keyboard and that will automatically just invert this color value that I'm gonna use for my mask. And then I'll just simply just left click back on this area to change the mask value. So now here's the mask that I get. So I'll go back here to my brush tool and I'm gonna work with a setup like this. So the last thing I'd like to do here is just create an overall dirt layer. So here at the top of the toolbar of the layer stack, I'm gonna click this create fill layer. And what I'll do is I just call this base. Now this fill layer allows me to create a material based on the channels I have enabled. So I don't really need to worry about the height for now or my normal. So for the color, I'm gonna choose something. Uh, let me just pick something kind of like this here, just kind of like a dirt color. So we'll do something like that. And uh, for my roughness, I wanna set this up pretty high. And then my metallic, I want to be uh, here at black or zero. So uh, now I have this, uh, let's mask this as well. So we'll right click, add a black mask. I will come over here to my effects. I'm gonna add a generator and a good generator for producing kind of dirt effects is this one called MG Dirt. And what this is gonna do is uh, basically mask this dirt to the occluded areas based on my ambient occlusion and my curvature map that I have baked to my project. So now I can go here to my dirt and I can do things like adjust my dirt contrast so maybe we'll lower this, and I also have a dirt level. So I'm just gonna go with something like this. Now, I might like to reuse this guy as well, so I think what I'll do is just create a layer group, and I'm gonna call this dirt, so this is gonna become like an overall dirt material. I'll take my base and just drag it into here, and now I can just right click, and we'll create a smart material out of this. And here is that dirt material. Okay, so now we're gonna drop over here to the body texture set, and we're going to start to reapply some of these materials that we've already been working on. So for example, we already have our base. So let's left click and just drag and drop this guy here into the project, and you can see here we have our base. Now, it's a smart material, meaning that all of the layers are still intact, so I can go back and make any changes uh, that I would like. So for example, maybe I'll go back here to where I have this grunge scratches, and I'm gonna change the UV scale. I may need to tile this a little bit more to match the texel density of the UVs as part of this texture set. So I might do this. Uh, I also might go back here to this guy and increase the contrast a bit, and adjust the balance. So now I'm gonna go back here to my dirt that I created. I'm gonna use this guy as well. So we'll left click, we'll drag and drop and just place him here into the layer stack. And now I have this dirt added. So very quickly, I was able to take the texturing that I did here for my texture set list. I saved it as a smart material. And now I'm just reusing that here in another texture set. Next, I'd like to add some stripes here to the body area. So what I'm gonna do is just use this uh, layer that I have. It was just a standard layer that was already in the stack. And you can create a, a standard layer by just clicking this add layer button. A standard layer allows you to paint on the mesh while a fill layer is just allows you to fill a layer with specific values or maps. So here, I'll just call this uh, stripes. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just come over here to my brushes 
And I'm just going to make sure that I have just the default hard brush. And then I'm going to click my material section here. And I'm going to get rid of my height. And uh, let's see, I'll leave my metal, but let's just turn off my normal channel. And for the roughness, I'll set this up to kind of a high value here. And then I want to set a color. So I'm just going to choose a color here. And now I'm just going to come over here to the 3D 2D split because it'll be a little easier to apply this stroke here in the 2D view. So uh, what I'm going to do is just come right over here to this area and I'm going to uh, just resize my brush a bit so I can do that using the keyboard shortcut of control and the right mouse button left to right will uh, increase the size. Here if I click my brush settings you can also change those manually right here so you have size, flow, and stroke opacity. So I'm going to set my size. I'm going to just left click out in an empty area, hold down the shift key. And what this allows me to do is create a perfect straight line. So you can see that I'm just moving my stroke across this body area. And I'm using this dotted line to kind of line up how I want this line uh, or this stroke to be created. And then I'll left click once more to create the stripe. So now I think I'll do the same thing here for the hand area. Now I want this stroke to be affected by the dirt that I already have. So what I'm gonna do is left click and just drag and drop this here down below the dirt. Now I'd also like to kind of break up this stripe a bit. So I'm gonna mask this. So I'm gonna right click and this time I'm gonna choose add a white mask. Now a white mask is like a holdout mask, white being opaque. So we still see the stripe that we have. And then I'm going to come over here to my add effect button. I'm going to choose a fill. So here I'll click this grayscale button and I'm just going to find a grunge map in here to use. So here I'm just going to use this grunge scratches. And again, I can increase my contrast and then change kind of the balance of this guy here. Here I'm going to try the invert option and then adjust my balance. I think this gives me a little bit more of what I'm looking for here around the edges. And so here I have my stripe. I will go back in here to my 3D view and just zoom in and take like a closer look to what I have. So another thing here that I can do within this mask is let's say I want to uh, paint on this mask. So we've created a mask here uh, by just using a fill. And uh, earlier in the video, we showed how we created a mask using a generator. So now I'd like to add a paint effect to this layer stack here so that I can uh, actually paint to further refine this mask. So now I'll click my effect button and I'll add a paint. I'll come back over here to my brushes and I'm gonna choose this Dirt 2 brush. And this time if I hold down the control key, right mouse and move up and down, I can control the actual hardness of the alpha. So now what I can do, if I click my material, you can see that it's set to black, so it's gonna be completely transparent. So I can actually start to paint in here to kind of erase this area, or I can hit X key to toggle to white so that I can paint back in. So maybe in this middle area, I wanna kind of fill this in, and then I'll hit X to kind of erase back out of that mask like so. So just a way for me to manually kind of clean this up a bit. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do is take care of my base texture set. So uh, let's jump back over here to our smart materials. And here I might just try this iron old. I'll just drag and drop this here into uh, the layer stack. And so uh, here's what we have. Uh, I might wanna go into the actual layer stack itself and maybe make an adjustment here to my UV scale. So here it's set to two. I'm just gonna increase this a little bit. Get something like this. And then I'll go ahead and reuse that dirt that I already have. So I'll left click and drag and drop, place that into the top of the layer stack. And so now I have my finished texture. So now that we have our texturing completed, we want to render an image that we can submit for the contest. So we're gonna do this using iRay. So here at the top, I'm gonna to click this camera button, which will send me into iRay mode. So here for the field of view, you're gonna to wanna to set this to 40. Then we're gonna come back here to our viewer settings. And for the environment rotation, you're gonna to need to set this to 250. Then we can come over here to this dome section. So I'll left click to expose these parameters and I want to enable this clear color. And you're gonna use this default gray background. So now here we can just zoom out and you're going to want to position your shot to something similar to what I have here. Now we also need to set up a minimum resolution to submit your image. 
So here you'll have this option here for override viewport resolution. I'm gonna enable this and you can see here it's set to 1920 by 1200. This is the resolution that you wanna use. And so here I have my submission ready. Now for rendering, you'll notice here that you have this max time. So if you wanna increase the quality of your render, you just need to increase the max time and you increase that until you get the quality that you want. You can also come here to your display tab and activate your post effects if you would like to enable any glare or bloom. So once I have my render complete, I just need to hit the save render button. Now you also need to provide a screenshot from the Substance Painter UI. So now I'm going to jump out of uh, iRay mode to get back to my viewport. And here I can just set up an angle, something similar to this here, and then just do a screenshot of the entire UI. And you can do that using any screenshot software that you have, or just using the OS screenshot tool. Once I have my renders completed and saved, I can then go to the submission link, which you can find in the description of this video. And then I can just fill out the form and you can see here you have an option to submit your uh, iRay render, your screenshot, and any optional renders that you like. Well, thank you very much for participating in this contest. I wish you the best of luck. And most importantly, be sure to have fun.